102%. This is the growth of Chewy's holding stock in the past year, and analysts expect it to keep growing at a 15% annually in the next 5 years. But is it sustainable for Chewy's to provide these remarkable returns for investors in the future? You'd better grab something to eat and join us as we analyze Chewy's stock. Otherwise, we're not responsible for any emotional eating because of this video. Welcome to another video of Take It Finance. First of all, we want to thank all of our subscribers for reaching to 105 subscribers. We really appreciate it and we hope that we can provide you more valuable videos. And if you have any friends or family that are interested in these kind of videos, please share it with them. And let's begin. With vibrant artwork and eclectic decor, dining at Chewy's is an enjoyable and fun experience. From grilled fajitas to cheesy enchiladas and crispy tacos, their menu brings a fusion of Mexican and Texan influences. With 98 locations in 17 US states, Chewy's brings a taste of Mexico with a Texan twist. In the past decade, Chewy's has opened 40 new restaurants all over the US, attracting new customers. But it seems that their base customers from Austin, Texas, the state where the company is coming from, are not so pleased with the changes that the company is making in their favorite restaurant. They say it's really mediocre and surprisingly expensive. There's just far too many good places that do Mexican food better, so I don't see who it serves other than tourists. And while the company is proud of their distinct menu of authentic, freshly prepared Mexican and Tex-Mex inspired food, some of their loyal customers totally disagree. But obviously, when it comes to food, there are opinions to both directions. Let's see how Chewy's Tex-Mex food translates into sales. Chewy's has been steadily growing its revenue over the last decade, except for 2020 because of COVID-19. Here we have to bear in mind that as of 2019, 80% of their revenue came from restaurants. And because of lockdowns during the pandemic, many restaurants and businesses had to stay closed. And as you can see, it had an impact on Chewy's revenue. Their operating cash flow is positive, which is a good sign. Ideally, we would like it to increase, but here it's definitely not something to be concerned about. What's also a good sign is that their operating cash flow has been higher than their net income, without any exceptions. Meaning, Chewy's is generating more operating cash flow than it is reporting profit. So this is a good indicator for their financial stability. Now, Chewy's free cash flow has been up and down, and sometimes even negative. This might be because they had to spend a lot of money on opening new restaurants, which they actually do, and this actually reduced their cash. In 2013 they opened 9, in 2014 11, and so does in 2017. Obviously the ongoing economic situation caused a slowdown in Chewy's free cash flow, but they are still showing improvement. In terms of profit margins, they have remained steady in the last decade. Chewy's managed to stay profitable despite their expenses and lease contracts some of which increase from time to time based on the consumer price index. But other than that, most of the time they underperform their industry average, which is something to keep in mind. If you're not sure what is the purpose or the meaning of all the profit margins, and you want to know how to calculate them by yourself, check the video above. Improvement aside, let's see some not so cheerful numbers. Chewy started taking on debt, which is totally fine. But from zero debt to equity ratio to above 100%, that's not fine. Basically, Chewy's has borrowed a lot of money compared to what shareholders invested in the company. And they invested a lot. This could be risky because they might have problems to pay back their debts. Especially when things aren't going well financially. While the old restaurant industry has increased its debt to equity ratios, we still believe it is very important to keep those ratios reasonable. Just in case of events like COVID-19 or interest rate hikes happen again, and probably those events will happen again, it is important that those companies have cash on hand for rainy days. Together with the debt to equity ratio, it is important to pay our attention to the ROIC. In the last 5 years, Chewy's hasn't shown any improvement in their ROIC and has actually made less money compared to the money they've invested. This could mean two scenarios. The first scenario is that the company is not doing so well financially and this could impact future profits. The second scenario is that the company is making a financial plan for the future and on purpose is investing in businesses, acquisitions and assets so it could generate in the future a very good ROIC. This could be a warning sign and you should keep an eye on how they are utilizing their invested capital. Overall, Chewy's financials are good. We can see that they are growing their revenues, they are paying attention and acknowledging the importance of cash flows. We can see that the operating cash flow is positive and the free cash flow is growing. 
but we would like to see improvements in their profit margins and also we would like to see the improvement in the return on invested capital in the future. And of course, if you like this video so far, you can return us by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. The restaurant industry is super competitive and cyclical. It has its ups and downs. On the one hand, people want to keep enjoying their favorite restaurants and foods. But on the other hand, their preferences are changing and the competition is just getting stronger and stronger. Among Chewy's direct competitors, we have Cracker Barrel, Danny's and Ruth. With all the cyclicality of this industry, market analysis shows a positive outlook, with the industry expected to grow by around 10% annually. In 2023, the global market size was $2.6 trillion, and it is expected to increase significantly and reach $5.4 trillion by 2030. In our opinion, Chewy's has to keep working hard and improve its position in the industry, and keep everyone happy. On the one hand, the customers, and on the other hand, the investors which is easier said than done, right? As long-term investors, we believe that the stock's price tend to follow the company's fundamentals in the long run. We usually evaluate companies based on the worst case scenario that we can come up with based on the company's history. Now, even though analysts expect Chewy's will grow 15% annually, we think that based on its historical earnings growth rate, a 10% annual growth is more conservative. And it includes extreme cases like COVID-19 and inflationary situation. So by looking at Chewy's, we chose to evaluate it based on PE equals growth, which is 15. If it achieves 10% annual growth, the stock price could drop by around 5% to $33 by 2027. So right now, at a price of $41 per share, it has no margin of safety and it is obviously overvalued. Apparently, the market values it more than its actual growth. In our opinion, investing in Chewy's right now will not give you the full benefit of enjoying its growth potential. Unless it drops at least to $30 a share, we will not consider it as investing opportunity. As always, don't forget to do your own research and due diligence before investing in any company. And now, after spending some time at Chewy's restaurant, let's move on to the retail next door, American Eagle Outfitters, for a full financial breakdown. See you in the next one.